just preparing. Love it. So proud of you. So proud of you too. So <laughs> look We're at us. Proud of each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, uh, just so nice to be able to inspire something and for other people. So we are live. Yeah. We are live. <laughs> That's awesome. Perfect. So hello, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Uh, my name is Trey Sai, and I am the founder and author of Her Stories Untold. It's a global book project uh, with live talks and podcasts available in 12 different platforms, sharing different empowering and inspiring stories of women around the globe from all walks of life. Now, the reason this project was created was because I realized that there were so many women out there, transgender women out there as well as that have stories to share, journeys that have been taken, but you know, not realizing their significance and importance because everything matters. This project is open to all women and transgender women in the globe. Um, if you have a story of your journey of how you came to be, whom and where you are today, please do check out www herstoryuntold.com. Again, this project is to empower, uplift, and inspire other women. I've spoken to other men as well, so everybody is kind of welcome to together uplift and empower and inspire other women. Now, before we begin our talk today, I want to acknowledge that the land on which I live and work on is the traditional and unceded territory of the Quicklam Nation and lies within the shared traditional territories of the Tuoli, Watu, Katsiat, Muskim, Squamish, Kikit, and Stolo First Nations. And very importantly, I want to warmly welcome everyone joining us here today and our very special guest, Kristen Abello, a wife, mother, daughter, sister, and friend. These are the words that best used to describe the force that is Kristen Abello. So welcome, Kristen. <laughs> Thank you, Trey. So nice to be here. And I'm very honored that you invited me. Thanks so much. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, please share with us, you know, about uh, your very unique journey um, and your situation. Yeah, because Okay, so would you like to know the story? I can. Um, I recently published a book, uh, yeah. Sunrise. And did you want me to go back on to what originally took place? Yes. So okay. Okay. I think um, how it began, you know, where were you previously? And then what happened? And how did it evolve? And where are you today? Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, well, I wrote Sunrise, the memoir. It's an empowering true story. And the reason it was written was for my husband and for my family um, and for the world to actually give hope and inspiration to others going through any dire hardship or catastrophic time. So, my story. Um, and parentheses, we all have stories. My story began um, years ago when I was off training on a marathon run with my husband, Raul, and we were running a long turn. I was actually on my last training run and um, we turned the corner and the sidewalk ended. Unbeknownst to us, a car was coming behind us. Um, and my husband and I, we went to the median of the road. So as we went to the median of the road, the car is coming along 25 miles per hour. However, I, we do not know this. Um, and then it hit me from behind. My husband heard a big whoosh and he didn't know what it was or what happened. Everything happened in the blink of an eye. Um, and I was thrown about 30, 40 yards. Oh my God. That's crazy. Oh, we're just alert. I was in a coma. I'm sorry, am I cutting up? I think we froze for a bit. I apologize for that. Yeah, it, it was a, a, something very important. You said it hit you. We got to about, I think, thrown 30 to 40 yards, right? And Correct. From, yeah. And then... Um, uh, from the impact of the hit, 
I was in an immediate coma and, um, you know, I landed on top of the hood of the car and rolled off and, you know, all the ugly things were seen, meaning blood from everywhere. Uh, so that wraps up that question. Tell me, yeah, go ahead. Um, thank you for sharing and, 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 and I cannot even begin to, you know, like, understand fully what that actually felt like and uh and thank you thank you for being here today <laughs> I, I appreciate yeah and then Tom you know, yeah I, from up above thank yes. you <laughs> yes of course you know this beautiful universe is is protecting us and um were there any particular thoughts at that time when that was happening if you can well I okay my I was obviously knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. So it just went from jogging and suddenly just knocked out, basically. Yes. So it was My husband, um, he ran, you know, he ran, got the help. Actually, the person driving the car called Life Flight. So Life Flight here in Houston, Texas is actually their immediate response time is such of an essence when you're in such a predicament and such yeah. a catastrophic in, um, predicament whatever it may be um for medical issues but uh what is it life flight sorry life flight um quickly came and saved me and i was put on a uh Oh, uh, sorry. On the air flight. Two, it was a 21, 22 mile hike, yeah. or not hike, a 21 mile uh, helicopter ride to the medical center from where we were living at the time. Yeah, yeah. And so all the immediate response is what saved me as well as God up above. 100%. And, and then I guess, um, I guess jumping into the hospital now, were you unconscious for a certain period of time? And, you know, how long was that? And then I guess what would be very empowering uh, to share and very vulnerable, of course, and thank you for sharing, is how did you, like, what were the, what happened? Okay, the yes, let me, let me help here. So, yes, I was in a coma for the doctors were initially very concerned on the first 48 hours. It was touch and go, touch and go. Nobody knew my fate. Um, and on the seventh day, I did wake up. I woke up and I looked at my dad um, and said, what's the scoop, dad? Or my husband and my mom, they both they both have two stories and both of them are supposed to be when I'm waking up. So they both have a story. I don't know who's happened first because quite frankly, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was, I was telling my mom and Raul I wanted to go home. Yeah. And then to my dad, I was saying, what's the scoop? Because that was our famous, that was our famous line to one another growing up through college years I would always call my dad or my dad would call me and I would say what's the scoop dad like what's happening right <laughs> yeah yeah you know that was my lingo at the time <laughs> yeah 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 not now <laughs> yeah yeah no that that's 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 great and so I I'm hearing that you know during that time of course you know these are detailed in your book uh, I read your book yes. and thank you very much oh. uh, for this writing that beautiful book and uh I was, yeah, I read it like pretty much in one breath. <laughs> I so, love that. Thank yeah, so you. Thank you. Thank you for, you know, having the the courage and, you know, and the, having the the strength to write about it. Um, I think it, you know, I think for most of us um, that have not experienced uh, this traumatic brain injury, we probably don't know. And we're definitely not experts in, you know, understanding what it is. Um, in a general perspective, probably it's just, you know, we know that it's injury to the head, some some sort of impact, right? right? 
And um, I, I'm not a medical exp expert here and, and not trying to be, but I did read from, you know, for example, John Hopkins website, just to uh, give some, you know, grounding for our audience here to understand what is a traumatic uh, brain injury. And uh, perhaps you can come in to fill in, you know, to share with the audience that. So I think, uh, you know, what John Hopkins uh, has said that is explained is that a traumatic brain injury TBI happens where, when a sudden external physical assault damages the brain. It is one of the most common causes of disability and death in adults. And TBI is a broad term that describes a vast array of uh, injuries that happens to the brain. And this damage can be focal yeah. onto one area of the brain or diffuse happens in more areas of the brain. And the severity of a brain injury can range from a mild concussion to a severe injury that results in coma or even death. So in, in your case, it's, it's, it's beautiful and miraculous. And I'm so thankful, you know, like you said, the thank you. 48 outer hours was very critical and then the fact that you woke up on the seventh day and then while during that time you're in coma and you're recovering in the hospital what was that like like were you were you able to wake up and have full mobility of movement or like did you need you know time to relearn kind of things so to speak to get back to your daily bearings Hello? Oh, I think we have a little bit of technical. Yes, great question. I, I have very, um, am I on or no? Yeah, you're good, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> um, actually, it was, I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? Um, I think, I think we're going to the the point where you know in your hospital in the hospital you woke up right and then you're on your recovery journey pathway and what was that like like were you able to have full mobility uh, or is it did it take time to kind of retrain and relearn and reintegrate to your daily you know going about happenings kind of thing yes again excellent question and yes I did have the whole, everything you named, I had to relearn everything from learning to walk again. I was, at the time, I had an 18-month-old at home, um, and I had to learn to walk again. And so I was just like, he was at nine months old when he learned to walk. So that, I had to leave relearn to walk talking I recall the doctors and nurses and role and family cheering me on taking my first step and I didn't understand the big deal of it but I knew that I had to take that step but I didn't know why it was so hard I had zero idea why it was so hard um and when I was stable enough, they transferred me to TIER, the Institution of Rehabilitation and Research. And they took me there. And that's where I honestly learned to do everything again and get me back. And the longer I stayed there, the more my brain um, was able to come back. Um, the brain's power of plasticity is nothing short of amazing. And I, I've been saying that since it happened 20 years ago. Wow. It's been 20 years. It's been 20 years. Wow. That's a, that's just amazing. So, so courageous and so, Thank you. um, and, I'm um, yeah, I, I, I cannot, I cannot fully relate, but I can try to empathize and understand, you know, where you're coming from. And um, I think I want to ask you, um, what made you feel the most vulnerable in sharing about your story? You know, I would say the unconscious does not forget. And 
it was very vulnerable when I had to go pen to paper and write word for word every every day. But this is what I chose to do. I wanted, you know, the reason I wrote the book was to inspire others and give them hope. And if she can do this, I can do this. Um, so it was really just reliving it all over again, but this time being conscious um, and being aware of everything and what all the friends, family, husband, everyone went through. And it was, it was, it was a tough deal. Um, I would say, <laughs> yeah, tough deal. It wasn't what I signed up for. I thought it was, I was going to write a book and encourage others, <laughs> but it was, even though I was already healed from, from all the trauma that took place or so I thought I was, um, <laughs> And the book came about and I cannot be more happier that it is out there for anybody who wants to read it in any kind of same predicament as I was in. It doesn't even have to be the same predicament. It, it could be this, any traumatic experience. Yeah. And uh, because I read the book, I can honestly share that it's, it's a book for anyone to read I think because it's empowering and it takes a lot of courage and which segues into my next question for you um what was that was there any particular moment where you decided and said hey because you know it's been 20 years since that actual event and um what, was there any particular moment where you said you know what I think I am ready to share the story I want to talk about it Yes, I love that question. So here is what happened. When I came home from the hospital, yeah. back 20 years ago, I came home from the hospital in a wheelchair, a patch over my eye. I had diplopia among many other physical problems or broken bones and the, the traumatic brain injury. So I decided, when I was stable enough, I would say, probably at the end of the first year of recovery, no, not middle, I'd say nine months to 12 months, I was ready to share my story, to help other people, to inspire other people, to give other people hope that just because you're given a red card, I'm just using red card, even though you're given yeah. a bad fortune, you are not, you do not have to live that way and survive that way. If you have the guts, the will, the faith, support, everything, you will get through it. You will get through whatever tough time you're going through right now. And uh, no, that's that's beautiful, well captured, and it's uh, you know I I really admire uh, your inner strength, and uh, you know the 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 self determination of you know mm. wanting to push through kind of thing, right? So I I kind of want to go back a little bit because you talk about community yeah. and support, right? I think that's also very important in terms of um one's recovery uh, journey, right? No matter what traumatic situation um, you know one is experiencing or you know difficult circumstances kind of thing, right? So did you have a lot of support from your family, friends, you know, doctors, nurses, that type of thing. Thank yeah. God. And thank you a hundred times over to each one of them. Husband, family, friends, community, doctors, priests. Every piece played in such a vital part to my survival. Yes. Um, Gosh, I remember, you know, they were bringing, the community was bringing over food all the time. And my friends were just keeping me up and happy. My mom and sister were 
always joyful and around um, cooking, cleaning, helping with my baby at the time. Yeah. Um, so it, yes, it's hard work on everyone's account, not just the victim, but the area around you, the, it's hard for everybody. It's the caregivers. Yeah. They work just as hard as the victims. And, and I see this as in, you know, while you're growing and continuing your, the courage and the strength to, you know, heal in this journey, everybody also is in the part of it in terms of, you know, believing it, you know, and it's supporting you and encouraging and pushing you through, right? So, and I guess, I think in the role of like community support, you know, uh, it can from, come from all areas. It doesn't have to just be from your immediate family, right? But everyone right. a right. little bit here and there kind of thing. And then together, it's like you're building a big puzzle piece, you know, masterpiece of healing in this journey together, right? So um, puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I also want to shed light on that because I think a lot of times um, people may think that, you know, there's nothing one can do or because, you know, they're experiencing this or that person is experiencing this, but I, I don't have that, you know, experience. Right. But the thing is, I think the key point possibly to take away is that, you know, there is absolutely something everybody can do when, in terms of um, when absolutely. They're in situation, right? So just even asking questions or connecting the dot or linking someone together right um and yeah. just being there or sometimes even uh checking in just reaching out hey how's it going right and then you're this exactly yeah yeah so always always checking in okay, sorry. go ahead yeah go ahead did we freeze? there was a little bit of lag yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> fails, yeah? the reality of life yeah no matter how much right right you have to check the it connection there is always uh something unpredictable which is also part always. of the beauty of life <laughs> something unfolds so that you can do something else <laughs> um so no thank you very much for sharing that about that i you know i guess um if you could tell your younger self anything what would it be Golly, if I could tell my younger self something, um, I would say, okay, this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. It's a slow drip process on healing. This all has to do with the healing with the TBI and all my broken bones and just like getting back into life, entering life again. Um, Okay, and I would definitely say, oh, uh, I think we just had a, a bit of a disconnection moment. There we go. I lost you. I lost you. We, we got right. it. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah. alive. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you were, you were <laughs> continue. <laughs> okay, thank you. But where did I get? cut where'd I get cut? what would you tell your younger self you know and you said to have the strength and know that it's not a marathon you know, it's, it's not a marathon yeah and no it's not a sprint it it's is a, a marathon <laughs> yeah that's right it's not a sprint it's a marathon or slow drip process things aren't going to happen immediately I mean we all wish that in today's world that you know it happens like that. I mean, even I do. I'm guilty of that. And I always have to go back and remember it takes time. Everything takes time. Yeah. And I, I like how you mentioned that because that's so true and it's applicable to everything that we do. And I'm also guilty as a human being existing in this globe, <laughs> this earth that we share together. Yeah, we're constantly, um, especially by the way our society is today, it seems that everything's about instant results, instant gratification. Instant. instant right? Yeah. Um, while that's very, you know, can be very satisfying, the, the truth is that in life, as it unfolds, it thinks is a drip process, you know, and then you learn with each drip 
and then you build and then you mold and you shape and then you grow and then you evolve right and yeah. um, i think the, the point is that it's you know in in life we we make mistakes or things unexpected happen right but you know that we continue to have the strength to you know continue forth and forward um which leads me yeah. to my, my next question for you Kristen. i guess in summary like how have you chosen to survive over the years like after your you know, full recovery kind of thing like um like what were the things like what happened you know like what have you been doing now okay excellent question again um i look at you know i go day by day i look at today i look at tomorrow i don't look back what's that going to serve it i mean i can't go back and harp on it or dwell on it i mean we have to live life and not let life lead us yeah oh i love that yeah live life and not live. let life lead us right yeah yes either lead us or live us um the two l's <laughs> that's, that's um, so true um, I think oftentimes, you know, as human beings ourselves, we can get stuck in the past, you know, no matter what those situations yeah. are, you know, and then we lament and, you know, we magnify everything and po possibly go into analysis paralysis, right? But the thing is, time is moving forward and we cannot go back yeah. or, or time, you know, phase in life. And what we can do is what we can do now. And of course, how it evolves into the future, right? So I lost you again. I lost you again. I'm back. Oh, there we go. We're good. I'm sorry. I was, I, it just turned off. There we go. I think uh, we're, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. No, that's 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 perfect. Yeah. So live your life by uh, there. Was, I was reading something recently. It says live your life and gravitates towards what your heart desires or aligns exactly. with. Exactly. And 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 I always tell people, my friends and family, I was like, if it's not a bad thing, you're not causing any harm. You gotta just go for it. You know, you got to try because right. I'm with you, Trey. I'm all about that. <laughs> just. It, it, today once only it's not going to repeat itself <laughs> um i love it i love it yeah no thank you for sharing and and i think um i wanted to ask you how did you um how did the writing process affect your healing journey you know actually it was very cathartic um unbeknownst to me again um I did not, I remember I was writing it to inspire and help others, but it was a very clearing for me. Okay. Um, very clarifying, very, again, cathartic. I would use that word. It was very, very cathartic. But I did not go into this thinking that. So it was kind of like a, uh flowing of course naturally because you're recounting yes recounting your events and, and whatnot kind of thing so um in essence like it, it wasn't a thought you know stopping at like oh should i write this and how is it what does it mean to me mm -mm. but rather they're mm. just it's just right funny. it just like you said it flowed that i mean the paper flowed the writing flowed on the paper it was it was a very I mean I never considered myself an author but but however <laughs> writing this it was it's a true story it's my story so it was oh we lost it <laughs> Just waiting a moment here for the connection. 
There we go. Yes. Okay, I just got back on. Okay, so I wanted to continue. So if you can repeat your question, because I had something else to add on. Yeah, um, so essentially, uh, the, the question was, you know, how did the writing process affect your healing journey? Right. So you said it was it was natural for you, and it kind of just continues unfold as you were writing. Yeah, it's and the other time. interesting thing is, I've always been, you know, I've heard the stories through the years, okay? Yeah. But I have to remind you and the guests or the audience that I was in a coma. So I only remember certain gaps and periods of that time. Writing it Oh, I think we froze. I think if I may step in here, I think writing it, would, would you say it's kind of like, it's also helping you piece together those gaps? Piece together the gaps. And the, yeah, but even though it's been told to me so many times over the years, yeah. yes, it goes back to the puzzle. Yes. So that's a, so now you, you know, the, the whole story in, in one area kind of thing, right? So all that, story inside out, <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah, I just, uh, um, yeah, yes, it's different going into something. Obviously when you're in a coma, you don't know, and you don't know what's going on, but reliving it. consciously it's a whole different story um if if i may ask do you recall what was what were your first thought, thoughts you know when you woke up from the coma like and, you, you know up? i wish i could remember but i yeah. don't remember that those are stories that were told to me yeah so it was a, a reaccount i don't remember waking Say it again, sorry. Oh, sorry, I, I just said, you said you don't, it was a reaccounting, like somebody told you the story about what they saw kind yes. of thing. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it just, um, yeah, just kind of- Yeah, it was the memories, um, memory gaps played a big part in it. However, I do remember certain points, not at the first hospital I was at, okay. uh, Tiramamura Herman, but at the second rehabilitation hospital I was at, I remember towards the end there, that's when my memory starts kicking in, start going, starts going back to work, even though my brain was in the midst of major healing throughout that, that time. Um, I think that's, um, that's, the brain is so powerful, you know, and that it can heal itself and from all sorts of things. And I think, um, I think, you know, I think this is an area where it actually happens like traumatic brain injury. Again, I'm not a medical expert and reading stats again from Hopkins Medicine now, right? And right, that, right. CDC, right? And, yes. you know, they say about 176 Americans die from TBI related injury each day in 2020. Each day. That's, yes. that's intense. And then, and then there are more than 223,000 TBI related hospitalizations in 2019 alone. Now in, in 15, 15% of all U.S. high school students self-reported one or more sports or re recreation related concussions within the preceding 12 months. So I think in, in Canada, because, you know, of course, I mean, in, in Canada, I, I was now looking into and trying to understand better about this TBI. And it, it seems that, you know, we they're a key part of the brain injury Canada is that they have advocacy plans to bring more attention to brain injury, its impact and the need to, so happy to hear that. up to date information. And despite the prevalence of brain injury in Canada, um, I guess at this time, it seems to be difficult to gather accurate statistics on a regular basis um, because they rely heavily. Again, you know, this is where I'm talking about piecing the memories together is as they rely on hospital and the doctor's reporting, right? Um, yes. And many times the the brain injuries uh, are, are not actually reported at the time of the injury or at all, 
which of correct. course correct statistics right so there's that leg right because of course we the person has to heal right and then um and then then you know time needs to be had said so thank you i appreciate so much for you to like share your journey of healing and story um and i think that's so important for others to know um i do want to ask you Kristen, what message do you have for women around the globe like you know what was it you know just tips of how how you know what, how did you push through your you know if there was fear that was holding you back you know and how to have courage how did you find courage yeah I found courage a lot for me had to do with my faith system my determination my willpower and I wasn't gonna accept you can't do it. You're not going to walk. You're not going to do this. So, you know, I, many things were said and I just wasn't going to take it. And I was just going to try my best no matter what, but I'm at well. go by. I mentioned it earlier. Yeah. To live life and not let life live you. That's that's a big one that I always think of pretty much on a daily basis. Like if I start feeling down about something, you know, we're all human. We go through all those emotions. Um, and I make sure to just look ahead, look forward, look straight. It's gonna be it's gonna be good and just try your best listen to your gut um and you know what another okay I'll stop there you go ahead and ask me I don't want to keep on oh no it's beautiful I'm totally like I'm all (laughs) like wow this is this is amazing because it's true um that's I think what it is is it's 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 your mantra for daily living now and it, it applies. In it, every- it truly is. Yeah. You come up with a mantra, use that mantra. Just keep, keep going. Cause you can do it. You can do it and you will do it. Yeah. Um, so with- even if you think it's impossible, the word itself says possible. Possible. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, that was I'm a- all about that. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah, that was a, was it Audrey Hepburn? that it was I think you're right that is very yeah. smart I, I couldn't yeah. remember who yeah that's why uh it's like the the name William right I, I will love it. I, I love am it. will I am I am the will right so that's, that's I cool. am <laughs> so I mean exactly let live life and don't let life live you right live that's my life. main one yeah that's beautiful live live the life what that you want build towards it and I think uh if what you're doing yesterday is not working out that means you're gonna go push through possibly right what's comfortable maybe sometimes not so comfortable and then try to build and break from that form and then evolve continuously evolve continuously yes you're gonna take two steps back or you're gonna fall you're gonna fail but don't let that bring you down and and if it does, it's okay, but know that you can get back up and keep going. Just keep on marching forward. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think it also comes with um, curiosity, which I yes. think is also connected to uh, hope. So when you tie curiosity and hope together, it's like, oh, if I do this more, or if I try this, or if I push through a little bit more, what is going to happen, right? And sometimes things may be very difficult um, or challenging, but the beauty of that is that when you make that effort, no matter small or big, you're changing the path a little bit. Exactly. And slightly different outcome or a big different outcome right so just you are right on (laughs) exactly you perfectly said it um I believe in everybody I believe in everybody if they have a desire or will 
Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, that's the beauty of life. Unfortunately, there are certain circumstances, situation, events that happen to us that is not right at all and um, traumatic, um, you know, life changing. But at the same time, you know, grateful for the inner strengths one has, and of course, the community support that comes with it, and then mm -hmm. finding meaning and purpose that you know we build and grow stronger from that experience. We push through like things that we we would have never thought of doing or be able to do, right? So, exactly, what your book, your whole journey, your true story is about. So, um. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, Kristen, how, how do we get a copy of a book and, you know, maybe what other projects that you're working on or involved in? Okay, thank you. Um, well, first, you can get the book on uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Kindle, audiobook, and my website, kristinabello.com. And what, and the more books that are purchased, the more the hospitals get money for research. I want to make that so clear that, you know, yes, this book was written for family, friends, and whomever needs it, but also the hospital systems that save our lives every day, or someone's life every day. So um, part of the proceeds, or most of the proceeds, go to Tierra Memorial Herman. Uh, is this a hospital in uh, where you're situated? I'm sorry. Sorry, is this a hospital in where you're situated? Like in? Yes. Yes. And they focus um, exclusively on uh, TBI, traumatic brain injury. I I'm sorry, I missed you. We got. Oh, sorry. Second, I, sorry. I said the the hospital is uh, they're leading like kind of research. You know, very much hundred focus on uh, traumatic brain injury. Yeah. Yes, um, traumatic brain injury at, yeah. over at Tier Hospital they do, but at Memorial Hermann it's every everything. Um, at Tier Hospital, well, they do many stuff, but the brain and traumatic brain injury and spinal cord injury research, which is done by the Mission Connect doctors, um, and this is a group that researches um, period furiously um, and making a difference every day, a positive difference. So I firmly, yes, I'll, I was gonna go on in a rabbit hole, but I'm gonna no, stick no, with no, please share us like, what, what, yeah, like um, <laughs> I, I think your book is amazing and it's going towards a good cause. Every book is, you know, some of the don't, it's also donations for this hospital that is going to help so many more other people. And the thing yeah. about um, supporting others is that I always tell my friends and family, you don't have to experience yourself in order to try to empathize what is happening. You Even are if, so right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes, you know, as human beings, we often don't get involved or try to better understand, do deeper research of something, an issue, you know, situation, unless it has happened to us. But the beauty of life is that at any given moment, you know, I, th I always say life is a fleeting moment. It is very long, but very short. Um, we all right? have it the is. opportunity, right? Every day to be able to do something. And doing something means, could just simply be, you know, learning about something, right? Um, I, I, I want to insert here about this uh, general statistics about TBI that I, I was reading up because I, I became, you know, I, I care about it and I want to learn more about it, right? And it seems like yeah. in one of the Canadian stats, like tra traumatic brain injury doesn't seem to be just a straightforward thing. It's definitely not is. And every situation is different. Again, I'm not- Every a situation is completely different. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. 100%. And, and they, the statistics, the general statistics say that by the year 2031, traumatic brain injury is expected to be among the most common neurological conditions. Uh, for aye, 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 aye. Yeah. So I, I think it's so important that, um, you know, we that, bring awareness and understanding 
to this. Yes, and the research to make it to improve the survival rate of human beings going through yeah. this catastrophic hundred. And I, I think it's so important that, you know, not in this talk or realm, but possibly like further bigger development of support and network for people that that need it kind of thing, you know, beyond maybe their family or friends, you know, kind of thing, right? So I think that's that's so important. And you don't have to experience the same thing again, once again, to support. I am so glad you're saying this because you don't have to experience it. I happen to be blessed with the experience. And that's but such what a blessing I can give back to others. And you don't necessarily have to go through something. You don't like it could be any anything that you want to help the world with anything. I mean, feeding young children, literary books for young children, actually, the also, homeless. I mean, anything. Anything, right? And I think Anything. that the seed of that is curiosity, wanting to learn more. And then as you yeah. learn, it's like the, I would call it the Pomodoro technique or something. I as love it. I love it. Get to the task for 25 minutes, you're going to be working more than five minutes on that task, right? So if you commit to planting a seed of curiosity, you right. know, you click on this link and do some research, and then you're going to be clicking on other links and learning about all that information, right? So it that it's it's fun to learn it's great yeah. i love learning new things um, we never can know too much <laughs> exactly right life is, we're, we're pupils of of a lifetime we're always right. learning lifelong learning process um i love what you said about being blessed although it was an unfortunate unexpected traumatic event and how one can turn tragedy and perceive it as a blessing I think um, a lot of times things and events and situations happen to people and we tend to gravitate to like, why did this happen to us? Yeah. And I think it, of course it takes time and it's easy to be said here, of course, in, in a live talk like this, but at the same time, how do we evolve and change that mindset to wait, everything is happening for me. And how do I utilize that? For me and for a reason. And yeah. all we can do is make good of it whatever is being thrown at you yeah whatever it may be whatever hardship just like I said earlier there's a there's a quote I think is like if somebody throw lemons at you make lemonade right yeah it's a lemonade right. oh I love that one <laughs> Yeah, so that's uh that's what we, we might be a little bit slow and delayed in you know in terms of what is this you know and then working through the process, but you can definitely make lemonade still. <laughs> and yeah, all the come, come yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's, it's um, true. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. and. Yeah, and I, I appreciate, I'm just keeping mindful of our live talk time today. And I, I want to, you know, stop here and thank you so much, sincerely and deeply uh, for joining Her Stories Untold, Live Talks' Trey, and uh, for sharing your empowering, inspiring, and uplifting journey and sharing your vulnerable moments of your traumatic um, uh, journey and your healing process. And I'm, I'm so grateful to have read the book, uh, Sunrise, and I hope, you know, I'm going to be sharing the links of that to leading um, to the book so that people can learn about it some more. And Thank then you so much Trey it was such a pleasure and I'm so honored again to say it um and the more books that are spread or shared the more money for research yeah and it's helping all those people everybody that needs it and that research continues to evolve so so for very good causes um I yeah and I I thank you for you know yeah, looking into that and expanding and growing that. And it's so important um, as well as, and what was it? We're going to leave with your mantra. <laughs> <laughs> to yeah. live life and not yeah. let life live you. <laughs> okay. So to live life and not let life live you. And this Correct. applies 
to everybody, not just women <laughs> in this entire right. Yeah, everybody in this world, if we can spread that little saying. Yeah. <laughs> we could just push through, right? So yes. Yeah. So thank you again very much. Thank for you. You're the best. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, Take care and I will continue to strengthen and empower other women around the globe. Men and women. Okay. Yes, we'll do. And you as well. Talk yes. soon. Thank Take care. You. Bye for now. You Thank too. you. Bye. Time. Have a good weekend. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.